learn, learn how to act. And the best way to do that is to find out who the best people that you like, where did they come from, what did they do, where did they learn, and try to track that up that way. Um, and, and then go after it the way you would go to law school. You want to make 26 million bucks for six months work? What do they need to study for? Anybody can act? Not true. Uh, I, I would not get into a jet pilot, uh, uh, the cockpit of a jet plane right now and think I can fly it. I might once it's up, they tell me what to do. It looks like, well, I'm flying the plane. No, I'm not. The process of acting is so involved that it's never ending in terms of what you have to learn to do. So this process of, of auditioning, what do we need to do? First, as I said, learn how to act, learn to study, learn to do the work. Um, again, let me go back to most actors think they go to class and they do a couple of hours and that's why aren't they getting paid 26 million bucks for six months. People who are in law school are doing it 15 hours a day. People are in medicine for years and years and years. Get your doctorate in philosophy and you're studying all the time. Get a, a, a job in an insurance company, you're there eight hours. But actors think, oh, an hour here, an hour there. You really want to be a good actor? You want to beat everybody out? Do seven hours a day. Read, study, work on scenes, work on exercises. Exercises are critical. You know this from, from the Russians, Stanislavski and Lee Strasberg, that the core of our work is from our senses and how you can develop those. So, back to the audition process. Don't go in and pick up the sides newspaper first find out if you can get hold of those sides and that whole script as early as you can go over that script with a fine-tooth comb like a detective at a crime scene number one be a detective at a crime scene don't just read uh, exterior beach midday February think about that okay if it's exterior beach what kind of beach is it a lake or are we at the, are we at the ocean is there wind? Is there sun? How would that affect me? Okay, February, outside. My ears are cold right now. I'm wearing a coat. I'm a little chill. Hmm. Most actors don't think about that. But that's an aspect of it. So all of a sudden, an actor goes, oh, it might be a little cold. My and this might have an effect on my behavior. It might. Then uh, an actor will read, um, Jill gets out of her parents' Mercedes. <clears throat> Most actors are going, okay, she's getting out of the car. No, she's not getting out of the car. She's getting out of a $100,000 automobile. What does that tell us about her? What does that mean in terms of her history? Probably that she's been given a lot of opportunities to do a lot of things that people who don't have money get to do. So maybe that tells you a little bit about the fact that she's had an educational background that she's been able to use. Maybe that tells you a little bit about the fact that um, she's been given some advantages that other people have. Most actors don't think that she gets out of a car. That's all they're thinking about. So how does that affect your acting? Take the time to think about what school did she go to? Did she go to Vassar? If so, then there's a certain way that she might speak. It might affect the way she speaks. She wasn't born in the Bronx and uh, raised in the back of a pizza parlor and struggled to get to community college. That would create a different, different kind of a person, wouldn't it? So, the trap is the actor goes, where are my lines and how am I going to say them? It's a big mistake. Where are my lines and let me say them? Huge mistake. You have to circle around and around until you move in, until something happens where you begin to have so much information, detailed information, and you have to learn how to read this way because you may get that script two hours before you go in. Sometimes the idiots, pardon my language, go, oh, we don't want to give the script out before the audition. They want you to come in, not know, really know anything. And then they want you to put on, you know, get the Philadelphia marching band and play your drums. Oh, God. How are you supposed to do that? Oh, what do we need? Let's just see who they are, essentially. No, you don't, you dope. Now, if you're Leah Kazan, he used to do, he, he knew he could take anybody and get a performance out of them, so he'd take them to dinner. And he'd talk to them, and he'd start to get an idea. He'd go, wait a minute, 
maybe if I do this with them and I say that, look at how they react to that. So he's already finding a way to create a performance um, with people who don't know how to act because he doesn't need them to know how to act where he didn't, he's dead now. He knew he could get what he needed almost in a manipulative way and he, and he wasn't concerned because he was so knowledgeable of, every, of the acting craft and himself having been an actor in the group theater of uh, cameras and where he's going to shoot it and how he's going to do it. His preparation was astonishing. So in a situation like that, that's very unusual. Uh, most directors today have had no acting training, but they've had a lot of technical stuff, so they know how to record this stuff. And they think actors are actors. They're props. Move them around a little bit. Get them to talk. Slap them. No. Best directors usually almost always had a lot of acting training in their background, a lot of theater, and know the, the, the ramifications and the problems that go on inside of an actor's mind, which are very complicated. And the better the actor they are, the, the less it looks like they're doing it. But they're very complicated.